There's no question that one of the biggest perceived scams in the music business are record labels. And we've heard time and time again of all these really successful artists who will be making millions and millions of dollars and yet they're taking home little to none of that. Now, as a real life music attorney, I have a chance today to actually share with you guys how these deals and practices actually work. I'm pulling back the curtain and I'm exposing these record labels. So if you're ready, let's go. Hi guys, I'm top music attorney, Miss Crystal. I'm an entertainment attorney, public speaker, and creator of the Top Music Attorney School for Artists and Record Labels. I'm the owner of Dukes Up Records, and most importantly, I'm an independent artist. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss my weekly videos giving you my best tips on the music business, industry news updates, and teaching you how to stay legally protected. All right, so let me just kind of preface where we're going with this video, and I'm gonna break this into three main sections of how these deals work, how these tactics and practices work by record labels so that the label ends up making pretty much all the money from these artists. So at the outset, I just wanna kind of, you know, set our mindsets straight. When we're talking about record labels, we're talking about music businesses. And just more plainly, this is just another business type. And so that kind of framework needs to be clear. It's not. For a lot of artists who kind of run into these deals, especially the up and comers, especially those who are kind of young in the business, most artists are just excited to get signed with a record label. And half of the time, especially with my clients through my law firm, you know, they'll be sending me contracts and they'll say, oh, I got a record label offer and they're so excited and that's cool. But I usually meet a lot of these offers with a little bit of criticism because I understand how these deals typically work. And I can even give you an example from literally today. So I have a band that our office represents. The band got an offer from a record label. And so before I even review the contract, I always say to the artist or to the band, all right, remember, we're talking about potentially entering a partnership, right? This is a business that you as a business person or as a business entity, you're going to join. And so let's look at it from that standpoint. Let's not look at it as they're going to be giving you this huge opportunity and they're going to make all your dreams come true. Well, let's hope that maybe a part of that is the case, but that usually is a very small piece of practically what it looks like when you do these deals. So as I'm looking at this little offer and before getting into the contract, I'm researching this company. Are they a legit company? Are they registered in the state they say that they're registered? Who runs it? Is it someone who knows anything about music or is it just someone who got excited to be involved in music? And so be a little bit skeptical before you even look at the contracts, but then look at the contract. So that leads me into the first reason why record labels are considered one of the biggest scams in the music business and that's advances. Now, by definition, an advance is a sum of money that the record label is fronting, which goes directly into the artist's pocket. This is like a signing bonus. So if I'm offering you a record label deal and I say, you sign with my record label, I'm gonna give you $15,000 that you can then, you know, spend on a car, pay for some rent, then that's all very exciting for you as the artist, fairly and rightly so. Now, there are other types of advances that you might get, right? So you might get an advance on a budget for your record. And anything that is advanced to the artist, no matter how it's dollied up, no matter how, you know, it's gonna be described in a way of money that's going in your pocket, the bottom line is that as the artist taking that advance, you owe it back to the record label and that's gonna be in your contract. It will say, well, you get this amount, this is what's qualified as an advance, but this needs to be paid back before you get to collect on the music, on live shows, on any other earnings that are gonna be kind of discussed in the contract. And the reason why that matters is because you're taking a loan. Always understand that an advance is a glorified loan that, you know, in any other way, you'd be just going to the bank. I'm gonna take out a loan for $50,000, $100,000, you're gonna owe it back one way or another. But the difference is that the record label in this instance is gonna control what happens with the money when it comes to something like a budget. So in the instance of, let's say, you know, you're going to a studio, you have to record your record, you might have an option to go record somewhere else that's cheaper with someone who's cheaper. So ultimately you end up owing less money to the label, but the label has the right to come back and say, no, you're not going there. We're gonna put you in a mansion and we're gonna 
pay $3,500 a day to rent a studio. And, you know, quite frankly, you can't say anything about it. Right. So ultimately, the record label has that business control over what's happening with the finances or in the instance that now we're shooting a music video. Very cool. Right. Well, you don't have any control over how much is being paid to the director to set design, to makeup, to wardrobe. And you probably aren't caring about most of this stuff. Right. Well, you will when all of a sudden that music video costs $100,000 of which is being recouped and paid back from your earnings. And so again, you're not seeing dime one. And guys, when it comes to actually accounting for these expenses and having transparency, you're probably not going to see a whole lot of bank statements. You're probably not even going to know how the money is being spent, who it's being spent on. Or for example, if the record label is just paying their people in house for marketing to set up your Facebook ads, if you don't know what's happening with the money, you have no control. And in most instances, you don't have a right to know how those expenses are being paid or what the amounts are. So bottom line, you're going to be stuck with a huge loan and you may never see dime one, even if you end up becoming an incredibly successful artist or band, which, by the way, doesn't happen for the majority of artists. Next on the list of why record labels are likely considered one of the biggest scams in the music business, royalties. So we just talked about you have a big sexy advance. It's a signing bonus. You get to go have a big party with your friends. You get some money in the bank. That's all great. So what happens with now the royalties, which is the earnings from your actual music? The way that these deals are typically structured is that the artist is getting a very small percentage, right? So if you have 100% of the earnings, the artist in some instances might be making as little as 14%. And if you guys want to get extra fancy on this, there's a difference between gross and net. Gross means all the money that the artist made versus net, which means the record label is going to recoup its expenses off the top. And what's left over is what's going to be split between the record label and the artist. And in 100% of these major record label deals, the artist is getting only net earnings. And so if it's 14%, well, you've had to make sure the record label is recouped, the record label is paying itself back. And then at some point, the artist will be entitled to his or her share of royalties, but that might be something as small as 14%. So who's making a living on this, right? Who's able to really, you know, build when they're kind of in financial debt. And so that's why you see some of these artists who will end up branching out and they'll start a shoe line, they'll start a makeup line. And so it's kind of these efforts to bring in further revenue because they're getting such a small amount. And remember, the artist signed away their soul for whatever that signing bonus was in the beginning. Following closely after that of why record labels are considered one of the biggest scams in the music business, well, let's talk about the 360 deals. Now, record labels have gotten a little sneaky on this. They don't call it 360 deals anymore. What they do is they use different sections in the contract to basically do the same thing. So, the way that 360 deals typically worked is the record label signs the artist, the record label is going to distribute the music, they have a share on the music, but then the record label says, I want 360 of everything that the artist makes, right? So that's going to be now live shows and merchandising and any other stuff that the artist does, right? They go and get an acting gig, not necessarily related to the music, but still, you know, in their entertainment career. So these 360 deals are good for the record labels because they allow the record label to collect a little bit of earnings from everything that the artist does. Now, from the artist standpoint, the artist might say, well, that doesn't really seem fair because the record labels typically are only distributing music. They're only helping with the music. They might do a little marketing. But other than that, they're not getting your gigs, right? They're not your booking agent. They're not helping to set up your merchandising. In a lot of instances, the record label will just take a little piece of the entire pie. Now, conversely, you know, the, the thinking behind it is, well, you know, with streaming being so low on the revenue share of everything that the artist makes anyway, we're making you a big star. We're getting people to come to your show. So if you're going to make 100 grand from your show, we should be able to get a small piece of that. But the point just being that whereas this used to be called a 360 deal, now it's just in contracts. And so there will be a new section and it will say, well, as it relates to performances, as it relates to merchandising, this is the share of income that we as a record label are going to collect. 
And I mean, even going back to the example that I used earlier, right? So I had a client who said, hey, we have a record label offer. I'm doing a search on this company. I'm kind of looking into, you know, does this company even seem legit? And I'll tell you one of the things that immediately stood out to me was that this particular record label was offering kind of a list of services, right? Which is not completely unheard of, but the label was basically saying, sign to us and then you're gonna pay for all the stuff we're gonna do for you. You're gonna pay us to set up your EPK. You're gonna pay us and, you know, setting flat fees and things like that. And so it goes back to the whole, well, you know, if you agree, that the label gets to pay itself through the advance that was given to you. They get to set their own rates. You better believe that they're gonna be paying a premium to their own people. And not to mention that you're essentially paying these people to do all this stuff for you and they end up owning your music. So, you know, the other piece of this, guys, I've covered this a lot in the videos on the channel. We go in depth about record labels and artist contracts. The bottom line is that when you sign with any record label, part of the deal is that you sign your music to that label. That label will forever own your music. You probably can't buy it back. You probably won't have any say in what happens to it. And it's a gamble, right? We hope the record label is going to come in and make us big stars. But even if they don't, the label still has one because they were able to keep the music at the end of the day. So back to my initial point where I said, keep in mind that we are just talking about businesses. Record labels are just music businesses. And so, you know, what I tell a lot of my artists, I go, we're not necessarily wanting to just villainize record labels because most of us as artists want to get signed with a company because we want help. But what is it that we want help with? And so if we can break it down and make a list, and we can say, all right, we need help with our marketing. We need help because maybe we don't know how to negotiate these deals. We don't know how to go and get deals with sponsors or how to go and book our own tours or how to reach out to other artists when we want to do collaborations with them. And so we think that, you know, it's going to be one stop shop by going to a label because the label should know how to do all of that. Right. And what I always want to reemphasize is that, you know, these labels, if it's not Universal or Warner or one of the majors, most of them are pretty small. Most of them are comprised of like one person, if not a handful of people. But they just say, I'm a record label. They say, I can do all this stuff for you, but you don't know until you're actually working with them. So what I try to do to empower artists is I go, don't, you know, fear the label. Don't think you can't do a deal. You can make sure you have, you know, a real entertainment attorney to review your contract and to have your back if you go that route. But think of this alternative. What if you built your own music business? What if you empowered yourself to learn these skills or to just simply hire these people? And this is something that is becoming a little more popular these days. And we see these artists who kind of blow up and then they're making $100,000 a month and they go, I'm getting the offers from major record labels, but forget that. I'm just going to stay independent because why would I give up ownership of my music? Why would I cut them in on my earnings if I've already kind of built my own music business? And so I say, don't fear the record label, become the record label become your own record label. And so that's why with my clients, we not only represent the independent artists, but a lot of our artists end up becoming record label owners because they now build their own enterprise. They have control over every facet of their careers. They end up owning their own music. And then if at some point they want to do a partnership with like a record label or a distribution company, cool. Let's do it. But now you have so much more bargaining power and control. And, you know, just think of it this way as well. If you go and sign with, you know, some other company, they're not going to teach you anything. They're not going to show you how to do this stuff. So five years later, hopefully it went well. More than likely it didn't. And now you're back to square one and you don't know how to do this stuff. And so if you're kind of serious about your career, you got to get serious about becoming a real music business. Whether that means you're being a real life record label, yourself, or you're just building yourself a structure by, for example, getting an LLC, getting the trademark to your name, doing kind of these 101 things to protect yourself in your career. And guys, I share this. I'm passionate about it because this is literally what I did. I've been signed. I've done the management deals, right? I am an attorney today, but like throughout my music career, I went through these steps. I had these certain failures and then I ended up just starting my own record label. And it's incredibly empowering. It's cool to say I own 100% of my music. It's cool to say I understand how to do these deals. And, you know, I'm here to empower you guys to do the same thing. And I specifically created a free course teaching you guys about how to start your record labels. 
And I want you to click that link down below if you want to go through it. Like I said, it's totally free. You'll just be getting some emails and we'll have these exclusive videos and tutorials. But I'm going to teach you kind of, you know, how do you get started? What do you have to avoid? And again, just to empower you. You have to know that you can absolutely 100% do this. And once you kind of challenge yourself, get a little bit uncomfortable, see what it takes, you'll 100% know that this is something that you can do. Go take out that loan. If you're gonna throw down and do it anyway, take out the loan yourself, but you'll find that you actually don't need that $100,000, that $500,000 that you can hire contractors. And this is all stuff that I'm gonna teach you. So definitely check down in the description and take control of your music career. If you guys are interested in checking out what I do musically, I'll be sure to link a playlist at the end of the video with some of my music videos. Don't forget to come say hi on social media. You can find me on all platforms at Top Music Attorney. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss our weekly videos helping you with your music career, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm Top Music Attorney, Miss Crystal. Bye, guys.